Ukraine reveals its plans of the total destruction of the Crimean Bridge. And one of the things which made this possible is the total defeat of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. And to make things even worse for Putin, his closest ally betrayed him. But more about all this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. Let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> so, in one of Russian, I mean Moscow parks, in this uh, oversized chess, some either local authorities or pranksters, they put the faces of the Western politicians. Uh, obviously, the pawns are Vladimir Zelensky and uh, Pashinyan, the president of Armenia. The king is Biden and the queen is Emmanuel Macron, the president of France. And of course, as you would imagine, this video was pretty much broadcasted everywhere. Federal channels, telegram channels, social media, everywhere. The Russian propagandists were ecstatic. But what they do forget is that whenever pawns they reach the end of the board, they do become some pretty extraordinary figures, and sometimes they can defeat the opposite king. And just doesn't matter whether these were local authorities or some pranksters, actions always have consequences. So, I mean, they shouldn't be acting surprised whenever some response happens. And so now uh, let's talk quickly about the closest ally of Putin betraying him. You will see how this is related. And then we'll move to the east of the country and talk about another Darwin Award for Russian soldiers, and then to the south, where the Russian Black Sea Fleet is now defeated. And so basically the betrayal I'm talking about is that the country of Armenia and its president, Mr. Pashinyan, they ratify the Rome status. Which basically means that Putin, if he goes to this country, he will be arrested. And allegedly Armenia was kinda a friend of Russia. And of course, the response of the Russian authorities, the spokesperson of the Kremlin, Dmitry Peskov specifically, he said that Russia is very unsatisfied and concerned about this decision. And well, they can be unsatisfied and concerned all they want, because it is not just Armenia. European Union also approved the total military support to Ukraine by the end of 2027, which will be amounting to 50 billion euros. And speaking about the military support, unfortunately, as of right now, America only has allocated approximately 5.2 billion dollars in military support to Ukraine in the upcoming month. But unfortunately, if they do not increase this support, this will only last approximately for six more months. And in the meantime, some people think that the actual number is more close to seven billion dollars. And well, as you might already know, Ukraine does not solely rely on the support by the West. Such as, for example, this French drone company called Turgis and Gayard, they recently partnered with Ukrainian aircraft company called Antonov, and they started developing their own drone called Arak Mail. And reportedly, the capabilities of this drone might even exceed the current drones that Ukraine is using from the West, including the American ones. Now, as promised, let me briefly talk about the situation in the East, where Russian soldiers demonstrated very low common sense in relation to survival, and then we'll move to the South, where the storm cloud are gathering above Crimean Peninsula. And in the meantime, if you don't mind, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this style of daily updating, and if sometimes they make you smile in these tough times. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube, and sometimes I will send you some funny memes. The link is down below. And so yes, before we go to this, just one quick stop in Rostov-on-Don, because recently, according to locals, a local storage of Russian military uniform spontaneously got caught on fire. As always, somebody was either smoking in inappropriate place, or maybe there was some electric wiring faults. I, I don't know, spontaneously, let's just believe them.
And now we get back to Ukraine, to the east of it. And so, as we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians and Ukrainians were engaged in combat activities this time next to Kriminna, Bakhmut and Avdivka Donetsk frontline with insignificant gains reported by either of the sides. So far, this specific map does not confirm these gains just yet. And speaking about Kupiansk, where surprisingly there were not too many combat activities recently. President Zelensky visited the current front lines, met with the soldiers, gave some motivational speeches, asked what they needed in order to make their counteroffensive more successful, and just overall showed that the president of their country cares about the current ongoing war. And in the meantime, if Putin himself he wants to meet with his uh, approved random citizens in Moscow, in capital, he will always be surrounded by like 50, 100 bodyguards, protection, <laughs> soldiers, policemen, and he will just say, yes, I am the one close to people, unlike Zelensky. Next, we get closer to Bakhmut, and Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a relatively big artillery firing position of Russians located to the southeast of this city. And besides that, they were able to destroy another assault group along with their tank to the east of Andrivka. And yet another concentration of the Russian infantry has been destroyed by Ukrainians to the north of Azarianivka. And just when you thought that Ukrainians destroying Russian forces was already enough, hold on a second, <laughs> Russians actually started to receive more and more Darwin awards for the most ridiculous ways of being eliminated. So Russians, at least five reported soldiers, were driving an air defense system called Strela-10, reportedly in Horlivka, when suddenly the driver lost the control over this heavy machinery, they stopped on the railways, on the rail tracks, and the passing train literally destroyed it, eliminating at least three soldiers. The rest two are heavily injured. But it is not just yet. Ukrainians were also reportedly able to find a Russian raider, electronic warfare system and suppression system called Bariso Glipsk 2 along the eastern front lines and destroyed as well, effectively blinding the Russian defenses along the eastern front lines even further. And by destroying such a seemingly insignificant military equipment, this is exactly how Ukrainians are able to strike deep behind the Russian front lines. But wait, there is more. Ukrainians were also able to destroy an extremely modern Russian battle tank T-90M located in Luhansk region. As you can see from this picture, and most likely, as always, they used one of their inexpensive drones. And so yes, now let's switch our attention to the south of Ukraine, where reportedly the Russian Black Sea fleet is being completely defeated, before talking about Crimean Peninsula getting extremely vulnerable. But first of all, allow me to make another quick stop in Dnipro, where as a result of Russian attack, uh, missiles and drones, Ukrainians were able to intercept them, but the debris still fell on the residential buildings, cover destroying severely some of the infrastructure. Then there was also another attack by Russians, and this one unfortunately was successful, happening in Kherson region, and also civilian infrastructure was severely damaged. But just overall, Ukrainians were able, in the last 24 hours, to intercept 29 out of 31 Russian missiles and drones. Besides that, reportedly along also the southern front lines, Ukrainians were able to destroy a Russian self-propelled howitzer called Pion, and for these purposes they used, most likely, a HIMARS. So basically, as you would imagine, the destructive force is absolutely immeasurable. And guys, I'm just really so sorry I'm not able to show this footage uncensored, otherwise YouTube will be restricting my videos and my channel overall. But if you want to support my work and also see fully uncensored episodes of The Russian Dude, you are more than welcome to check my Patreon. The support starts only as little as $4 per month, there is a link it down below to my Patreon, and there is one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not. As we go to the Zaporozhye front lines, specifically to Robotine, according to the same report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians regained the previously lost positions to the south of this settlement. And besides that, Ukrainians activated their counteroffensive measures along this front line, specifically next to Verbove and also next to Novoprokopivka, and reportedly even made some gains, which are 
not unfortunately yet confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine. But then right here we have a video from Blagodatnye, which shows that indeed it is now fully liberated by Ukrainians. But without a doubt, the most significant achievement of Ukrainians in the last couple of months is that theoretically they are able to completely defeat the Russian Black Sea fleet. So long story short, what it means. If you remember in the past one of the two biggest destructions happened to the Russian landing ship called Minsk and Russian submarine Rostov on Don. Even though, take into consideration that Ukraine does not have the capabilities to technically destroy submarines, and yet they are able to do it, and then it all culminated by Ukrainians destroying the Russian Black Sea fleet headquarters in Sevastopol. And one of the reasons why Ukrainians were able to be so successful, it is because they were using their own naval drones called Sea Baby, which for some reason Russians were not able to intercept, as you can see from this video. And as a result of this, right now it is assumed by many Western military agencies that the Russian Black Sea Navy is practically defeated, because they are not able to act as actively as they used before, they are not able to just dispatch their ships and launch missiles attack, attacks against Ukraine without being feared for their own safety, and even more, they even had to relocate some of their submarines and ships away from Sevastopol, from Crimean ports, all the way down to Rostov-on-Don or Novorossiysk, which is already far, far away the territory of Russia. And one of the immediate consequences as a result of this is that Ukraine was able to reopen three of its sea ports in the south to resume the imports and exports of grain, which are vital for the world economy. And the ports I'm talking about are Chernomorsk, Odessa and Pivdini. But in my own opinion, the most important thing as a result of Russian Black Sea Fleet becoming not so active in the Black Sea area is that now Crimean Peninsula became extremely vulnerable. And such as, for example, the statement by Kirill Budanov, who is saying that Ukraine will resume attacks against Crimean Bridge, it will not stop until it is fully destroyed. And then he asks a rhetorical question, what will Putin do? He will get just upset once again but he will not be able no longer to respond as he used to be in the past, which was just overall attacking the civilian objects. Once again, the reason for this is because the Russian Black Sea fleet is now scared, meaning it is defeated. Even Irina Verishuk, she is urging those Ukrainians and even Russians living on the territory of Crimea to leave the peninsula as soon as possible. She does not say that Ukrainians will be coming to liberate it very soon, but that's what obviously she implies. And even those Russians, both civilians and military-related personnel, who are moving in between Crimea and Kherson, and also obviously specifically inside Crimea, they do feel no longer safe anymore doing just that. They say that, yes, guys, I guess it is kind of about that time we should think about leaving. And just overall, I think this makes sense, that the attacks against Crimea, which will happen, will be a disaster for the Russian military, and obviously specifically for Putin himself. One of the very first reasons for this, it is that these successful attacks by Ukrainians against the Russian Black Sea Fleet, which once again culminated in the destruction of Black Sea Fleet headquarters in Sevastopol, they show that basically the Russian air defense of Crimea is completely incapable. As a result of this, because Crimean Peninsula is the one huge base for the Russian forces in the south of Ukraine, they bring their reinforcements from, for example, Rostov on Dom, and then they bring them to Kherson. So now this one big huge military base is under pretty much almost 100% fire control by Ukrainians. And something what not too many people are talking about is obviously that Putin he wants to protect Crimea at all costs. And as a result of this air defense is becoming less effective, Russia is now bringing even more of their raiders and air defense capabilities all the way across from the rest of Ukraine, making other regions to be even more vulnerable and trying to basically focus all the defenses on Crimea itself. 
and as a result of all of this, at this point it is almost 100% certain that the grand finale of this war will be happening on the Crimean Peninsula and most likely Ukrainians will be able to liberate it. They will continue their attacks against the Crimean Bridge, the main supply artery of Russians in the south, and they will continue methodically, one by one, destroying Russian raiders and air defense systems. And in the end, whenever Crimean defenses are completely blind and useless, this is when Ukrainians will be pushing against Kherson, liberating the rest of this region, pushing against Melitopol, liberating this key southern city, and pretty much separating Crimea from the rest of occupied Ukraine and Russia itself. And this peninsula at that time will be defenseless. And I know that at this point, there is still a long way to go for this point, turning point in this war. But believe me, it will happen sooner or later. And it will be beginning with some small victories of Ukraine in the east and in the south. And if you don't want to miss this crucial updates, which will lead to a Ukrainian victory in the end, just please consider subscribing to my channel. It only takes one click. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and see you tomorrow.